Today we're in the timeless to get some free wins by cheating the biggest, baddest creatures in the entire format into play, hopefully on turn three. So here is our turn three free win deck for Timeless. And the idea of this deck is we have not one, not two, but three different cards that can virtually just win us the game all by themselves on turn three. And all of our plans start with these mana dorks, Death Ray, Shaman, Delighted, Halfling, Gilded Goose. And these cards are super important to all of our free win plans. So free win plan number one, one of my favorites, just drop a Blood Moon on turn two. So Mana Dork on turn one, Blood Moon on turn two. Some decks just literally can't beat this. They're locked out of playing Magic. So that's plan number one. Plan number two is we are a Natural Order deck. Natural Order, one of the cards that was banned in Historic, freed for the first time on Arena and Timeless, and it's a ridiculous card. For four mana, we can sack a green creature and tutor a green creature from our library directly on the battlefield. So our Mana Dorks are really good sack fodder for our Natural Order. And the idea is we can natural order into one of three cards. We can get World's Bind Worm, which is just the biggest, baddest threat in the format. A 15-15 Trampler that if it dies, we get three 5-5 five, five Tramplers. We have a Troxa Grand Unifier. This is our card advantage natural order target. So if we're not in a point where we can just win with World's Bind Worm, we can get a Troxa, draw a bunch of cards, set up to win the next turn. We also have one Galta Stampede Tyrant. And the purpose of Galta is if we have some World's Bind Worms or a Troxas in hand, we can natural there for the Galta and then also dump our World Spine Rooms and Atroxes into play and just put like 30 trampling power on the battlefield on turn three, which beats pretty much everyone. And then since we're playing all these big hitters, we also have Sneak Attack. This is our free win plan number three. Sneak Attack, another ridiculously busted card that has never been legal on Arena before. Four man enchantment, you can pay one and put a creature from your hand into play unaffected by summoning sickness. So it gets hastened to lend a turn, but you got a sack and an ended turn. So the idea is we can use our mana dorks to ramp into this and just start putting hasty Atroxes, Galtas, World Spine Worms into play. All these cards are fine with sneak attack, like Atroxa draws a bunch of cards, Galta lets us dump our hand, but World Spine Worm is especially good because we can put it into play with haste, smash our opponent for 15, and then when we sack at the end of turn, we're going to get the three five five Worms, which if our opponent isn't already dead, which is very possible in Timeless, since everyone's fetching and shocking, uh, the token should close out the game the next turn. So that's the plan of the deck outside of our big free win payoffs a couple of questing druids to draw us cards plus it's another green creature for natural order lightning bolt for removal a minskin boo is a backup plan mana base a pretty typical blood moon mana base a bunch of green fetches to get our forest in case we drop a blood moon so we can still play magic some fast lands one mountain in the sideboard unholy heat brothers then for creature decks veil of summer minskin boo for control decks soul guide lantern for graveyard decks and that is Sneak in order? I'm not sure what to call this deck exactly, but it's gonna do some ridiculously busted things. So let's jump into some games and see how many free wins we can get on turn three in Timeless. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it. it I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish. We've got new tokens and playmats, and you can even get the token signed if you want. Check them all out over at mtgoldfishmerch.com. All right, we are teaching Rina Zoomers about sneak attack, I guess. We're playing some... Uh... <laughs> Super cheaty, very unfair timeless today. We are uh, all in on the busted stuff. Sneak attack and natural order and, uh, of course, Blood Moon, because why not Blood Moon? And uh, this looks like maybe a turn two Blood Moon hand. It is a turn two Blood Moon hand, assuming we don't get Fatal Push or Thought Seize, which seems possible, because that's a polluted delta. I mean, one of the things I love about this deck is we have three different ways to just essentially get a free win. One of them is just like... Oh, thought sees. Okay, well, hmm. Now this hand's a lot jankier. Now we got a bunch of mana dorks and a lightning bolt. Well, can't do anything about that, unfortunately. Oh, that blood moon was gonna. <laughs> okay, that blood moon was gonna be so good. This blood moon is a uh, very, very nice. <laughs> also going to be pretty good. Oh, that is the most tilting thing in magic. When you thought sees someone and they immediately draw the card you thought sees. In this case, it's especially brutal because I'm pretty sure our opponent just doesn't play magic now. <laughs> Turn to blood moon. Enjoy your mountains opponent. Well, that's a good life lesson that sometimes you do everything right 
and you still get punished because magic has some variants in it. Oh, well, maybe our opponent has a lot of red cards. <laughs> opponent. Oh, mountain. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll play a delayed halfling, and the worst part about this, or maybe... Maybe the best is we don't actually have a clock. We have three one-power creatures, so uh, it's going to take us a minute to kill you about it. <laughs> if they actually play like a Dragon Rage channeler, they could get back in this. Wow, we're actually like not that far away from hardcasting a Troxa. Get it, hit ya. Yeah, the problem we're going to have is there's not enough lands in the graveyard, so only one death rate's on, and lands are not going to go in the graveyard because Blood Moon's out, so we're actually two lands away and colors away more blood moons well i mean i think we just hope that this blood moon sticks and our opponent dies down to eight we do have the bolt so we need what two more turns of attacking opponent please a mountain we play a mountain uh yeah i mean hit you for three <laughs> this isn't a flawless victory but our opponent played a turn one thought sees and that's going to be the only spell they cast this game <laughs> Blood Moon! Blood Moon, ladies and gentlemen. Blood Moon. <laughs> it is natural order sneak attack shenanigans time and timeless. And uh, this hand, well, it's a sneak attack hand. I mean, basically, like I mentioned before, the deck has three ways of just getting free wins. Oh, God, Monastery Swift Spear. Well, we do have a bull. So way one, jank out with Blood Moon, maybe on turn two. Way two, jank out with Natural Order into something massive, maybe on turn three. Way three, sneak attack something massive into play and get you that way. Also, maybe on turn three. I think we just Lightning Bolt here. So we can't play either of our big four drops next turn anyway, even if we death right. So I think it's better to kill the Swift Spear. Next turn, we can Mana Dork. Ooh, next turn, we double Mana Dork. That's actually pretty nice. This means our opponent needs to kill both mana dorks, or else we get to do something big next turn. And our opponent doesn't know what we're doing? Oh, they know about the natural order. Yeah, all right, so they are going to be afraid. That actually, the information from that bobble is kind of big, because it tells our opponent if either of these mana dorks live, we get to natural order next turn. And... That's usually not good for the opponent. Opponent going to attack. We're not going to block. If we block, it turns on another Bowmaster to kill a Mana Dork. Like, Bowmaster Lightning Bolt would turn off Natural Order. All we need is a Mana Dork to live. And we essentially win next turn. Wow. Maybe they both live. And we... Well, what do we do? Too many options. Uh, they know about the Natural Order. We could... <laughs> We have so many, so many possibilities here. Let's sack the food. I think we're just going to natural order first. <clears throat> we can natural order. Oh, this is going to be sweet. Into our one Galta and put World Spine Worm into play. <laughs> How about uh, 27 power of tramplers on turn three opponent? <laughs> can you beat 27 power of tramplers? Your go. Nice Orcish Bowmaster. <laughs> And if you kill, yeah, oof, oops, indeed. I mean, not that they apparently could stop it anyway. Well, uh, yeah, even if you kill the World Spider Worm, we get 15 more power of tramplers. And uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that was pretty good. That was pretty good. That's power natural order. <laughs> All right, we are cheating big things. Ooh, this hand. Okay, so we're on the draw against the Lurus deck. So Thought Seize is a thing, but this is like, the Ragavan. Hmm. All right. What do we do now? This is a turn two Blood Moon hand, but the Ragavan makes it a lot worse. I think we actually play Death Right and probably block Ragavan if we get the chance. So no turn two Blood Moon. Ugh, more Ragavans. Ooh, but opponent doesn't have a land. Oh. Oh, this is really... They were really leaning on these Ragavons getting in. Well, we'll grab a forest. We will double Mana Dork. Oh, this is actually tricky. So we can block Ragavon again, but then if they kill our other Mana Dork, we don't get to Natural Order. We can let Ragavon hit us, but then that gives our opponent second mana. I think we block. I think it's worth it. <laughs> Come on. Live Gilded Goose, Dragon Rage Channeler, sure, and Ragavan, okay, never been happier to see a Ragavan, uh, we will win? 
<laughs> Let's uh, play the mountain, sag the food, and I think we just get that one Galta. The one of Galta has been really, really sweet in this deck. Uh, natural order. That will get a Galta. Galta. <laughs> uh, Atroxa. Can you beat a Galta and an Atraxa on turn three opponent? Eh, opponent's not even going to try. <laughs> Maybe this deck's kind of busted. <laughs> Maybe we broke it. Did we break it? <laughs> uh. All right. We are doing the most busted thing possible in Timeless this week. We are trying to get some free wins with sneak attacks and natural orders and blood moons and... Sin looks fine. Little light on mana. Okay, we do another land. That's good. This hand's a little risky just because... We only have one mana dork. If our opponent kills it, our natural order doesn't do anything. Min's Kimbu is a nice backup, maybe. Let's see what our opponent's doing. Might be Jund. Boomer Jund's a thing people try to do in Timeless. I don't know if it's that good, but people... people do oh, Colony Garden. Interesting. So it might be Yogg. I think Yogg, or maybe a Natural Order deck, would be the deck that would play Colony Garden. Prosperous. Okay, so it looks like Yogg. Well, good news is, no Fatal Push. No Fatal Push. Plays a land. Do we get to Natural Order? Oh, God. Okay. Uh, well, <clears throat> this turn might be decent. Crack our wooded foothills. Grab a forest. Uh, we will sack the food. And, oh, this is going to be super sweet. So we get to natural order away the, <laughs> the Gilded Goose. Get the Galta. And put two Atroxes and a Death Rite into play. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty reasonable turn three. All right, Galta. Photo Trample. Any number of creatures into play. We could just put one Atrox into play, but I think we just put both to get more card advantage, even though they Legend rule. Uh, so two Galta triggers. <laughs> We will take a uh, sneak attack, Atroxa, land, natural order for the first one. Yeah, this deck uh, gets off to some fast starts. <laughs> uh huh. Atroxa trigger number two. This is turn three. This is turn three. Uh, so we will take a natural order, a lightning bolt, a land, a. Hmm, sneak attack and world spine. All right. Uh, and we will pass the turn. Your go, zero one plant token. Your go, Orcish Bowmasters. Okay. I mean, sure, whatever. That doesn't actually do anything. Uh, yeah. We will get ping. Pony gains a life. We will discard three cards. Maybe getting both. Maybe we should have kept in attracts, actually. That might have been silly, because we can always sneak attack in the Atrox in the future. Now, let's discard some cards. I mean, really, it doesn't matter, though, right? Like, look at our board on turn three. Opponent. Uh, Hapatra, sure. And? No. <sighs> Court of Calling for Yogg, and that's infinite. Wow, we did everything right and still lost. Ah. <sighs> Well, what can you do? All right, we are sneak attacking in Timeless. Also, natural ordering. No fetch land is a little awkward. On the draw. I mean, we got a removal spell. We got the natural order. World's Spine Worm. If we draw sneak attack, it could be good. Opponent. Opponent put a fetch in the graveyard for us, which is nice. Death Rite Shaman. Hmm. Well, so this deck's kind of weird. When we have the choice between bolting a mana dork and playing a mana dork, unless we have Blood Moon in hand, it's usually better just to bolt the mana dork. Because all of our big payoffs are fours outside of Blood Moon. I mean, the way we get kind of punished by this, I guess, is if we exactly top deck Blood Moon, but... Abone it with the planes and some alchemy card that... Is it, oh, we did draw the Blood Moon. That's awkward. I mean, Blood Moon on turn three is still fine, but I still think it was the right choice. What are the odds that we draw exactly Blood Moon? But that is not an alchemy card I have ever really seen before. Gives a creature in hand perpetually ETB make a 1-1. One, one. Okay. Uh, why? <laughs> 
Why? Why are we playing this? Ramanamp Excavator. Oh, is this like a a value town deck? Are they trying to get us with ghost quarters? We're actually playing a lot of basics in this deck. Hmm. I mean, so we can Blood Moon, but we can also Natural Order, which seems better. And we get a land out of the graveyard so our opponent can't ramanamp it back into play. Uh, yeah. Well, we will play the land and Natural Order and sack and uh so it's either atroxa or galta to put world spine into play i'm a little worried that they could have like swords i think maybe we just go with atroxa like if we play galta world spine and they just like double swords we get nothing this lets us refu uh, refuel so we get a natural order we get a land we get a sneak attack and we might just take a mana dork I think we take a Mana Dork for Natural Order. We already have a World Spine Worm for Sneak Attacking. So I think having access to a Mana Dork to Natural Order off of is worth it. All right, opponent. Can you beat an Atroxa? We also get to Blood Moon next turn, which should shut down our opponent's shenanigans. Like, if you're playing Ramen on Excavator, I don't think we're going to just, like, hardlock our opponent out of playing spells. But if you're a Ramen Up Excavator deck, you definitely have plans for your lands, right? You're trying to do the Ghost Quarter Loops or whatever. Voice of Resurgence makes a 1-1. One -one. Wait, why didn't that also make a 1-1? One -one? What is going on with this Alchemy card? Opponent going to Ghost Quarter, sure. I mean... <laughs> In some sense, the Ghost Quarter plan is a little like the Blood, Blood Moon plan, where you really punish the decks that are being greedy and playing, like, all fetches and shocks. But when you run into a deck that's playing a bunch of basics, it's so bad. Uh, well, I think... I think we just Blood Moon here. Blood Moon plus Mana Dork. So we could play the Sneak Attack. The thing about Sneak Attack, though, is it costs a mana to activate. So we can't activate it this turn anyway. So I think it's better to get down the Blood Moon. About it. Oh, that's actually kind of awkward. Snipes are Mountain. I'm surprised I activated that. I guess our opponent just does not care about having lands. Uh, play the Delighted Half Leg. I mean, this is still fine. It does mean we can't play. Our plan was to play and activate Sneak Attack next turn, but the Ghost Quarter means we can't do that. We can just Natural Order, though. Well, or our opponent might just <laughs> scoop to the Atroxa. That also works. That also works. <laughs> sweet, sweet. It is Natural Order Sneak Attack Blood Moon time. Actually, this hand has none of those. I guess we just ramp into World Spine. <laughs> <laughs> plan plan Z. Just just play some mana dorks, hard cast a world spine. I don't know if it's possible that our deck does this. This hand's fine though. Like, we have so much upside, right? We have the mana dork, we have a removal spell. We got a little bit of card draw with the questing druid. Alright. We have a payoff in hand, so all we need to do is find one of many things, right? We find the natural order we probably win, we find the sneak attack we probably win. They take the card draw, which is probably the right call. Um, yeah, we'll just play the fast land and yeah, let's play the delighted Aveling. Our mana dorks might look weird, but Bowmaster is literally everywhere in this format. I, I don't even want to know what the metagame percentage is, but it is some very high number. So that's why we're playing all these mana dorks that are not quite as good, maybe as like a what? What did I do? Oh no. Oh, my random clicking max punished. Oh, I don't know if you've noticed this. I have this bad habit of like clicking and shuffling my hand around on Arena and a moto. I guess I was just randomly clicking and clicked the food and it sacked it and tapped our mana dork. I mean, thankfully we don't have a four drop that we need to play next turn anyway, but that's actually very awkward here. Cool. All right, so kind of unpunished, but we're still down a mana. Uh, I guess we just pass. Brainstorm. Ugh. Blood Moon. Blood Moon would get them pretty good here. I guess they probably still have, like, Ragavons or Dragon Rage Channelers, but we probably can disrupt them quite a bit if we draw Blood Moon. It's a pretty good Blood Moon deck. We need all the mana dorks anyway, so we can natural order off of them. Plus, they ramp into Sneak Attack. 
But they also let us just turn to Blood Moon, and our mana base kind of naturally, naturally supports it. All right, opponent's going to brainstorm, shuffle away. <laughs> Still grabbing non basics, no fear. Bowmaster's number two. I mean, we do need to draw something sometime, though. Like, there is a risk that we just never draw a payoff. That is a thing that can happen. We don't have brainstorms or anything. We got a couple of questing druids, but. We don't really have the the card selection that a lot of decks have. So there is like, there are going to be games, hopefully not too many of them, but there are going to be games where we just don't draw the sneak attack or natural order or blood man. Bonnet gets in, hits us, sure. Expressive iteration. I mean, our opponent's deck has a ton of card selection, brainstorms, expressive iterations, but they don't just get to be like, hey, we got 30 power and it tramples on turn three. Like, can you beat it? Uh, thought sees too. This might incentivize our opponent to get a to get a basic. Wow, opponent has literally no fear of blood moon <laughs> or their life total. Opponent, have we even hit our opponent? Bull your face. Opponents hit two. We our opponents dealt fifteen damage to themselves this game. I guess fat shock, fat shock. Yeah. They fetch untap shocked four times. <laughs> and that's a natural order. Uh hmm. How do we do this? I think we want a natural order into Atroxa and leave up Gilded Goose. If we hit a lightning bolt we can win right now off the atroxa so take the atroxa i mean either way we have an atroxa so lightning bolt new no. all right i mean that's still fine natural order land blood moon and opponent that happens a lot once we start atroxa opponents just scoop yeah we'll take it <laughs> sweet 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 turn to blood moon time is this turn to blood moon time this looks like turn to blood moon time Turn one death right, turn two blood moon. The rest of our hand is sketch. Like, ugh. This blood moon better be good. If this blood moon's not good, this hand is very risky. We really need to draw a sneak attack. Well, play for us. Play eight death right shaman. But blood moon can uh, take care of a lot of it. Issues. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Basic mountain lightning bolt is exactly what... Another Atroxa. Exactly what we did not want to see here. Is this mono? Oh, no. Oh, no. Wow. If they're mono red, Delighted Halfling, at least we can play that. I mean, against mono red, this might be the worst hand that I have ever had. <laughs> this might be the literal worst hand. We have three mana. Probably less, because they're going to have a million lightning bolts and you can kill the Halfling if they want to. Our Blood Moons, looking like dead cards while wow, they just bolt our face. Doesn't even care about the Delighted Halfling. And then we are never going to cast Atroxas or World Spine Worms. About it. Light up the stage to draw more cards. Oh, play with fire. Oh, that's like, yeah, the perfect burn spell to kill Delighted Halfling. Our one hope is like a Mana Dork sticks and we draw a land natural order. Minsk and Boo. Yeah, we... We're probably dead, honestly. Yeah, this hand is not going to do with this magic opponent. Hits us to eight. And skewers us to five. And attacks us to two. Well, there's land number three, but it's too late to matter. Well, <laughs> so much for turn two Blood Moon. <laughs> eh. Ugh. Uh, I think we mulligan it. Okay, this is much better. We'll put the World Spine Worm to the bottom. Manador questing through a double natural order. That's what we want to see. Ooh, opponent's a Yarion pile. Interesting. I'm surprised I don't see more money pile decks. Like, you got Fetches, you got Omnath, you got Yarion. Like, you can build the money pile deck. You got the One Ring. You can build money pile that is essentially, at one point, was like the best deck in modern before Yarion got banned. You can build that in Timeless, like pretty much all the pieces. You got the Triomes. I'm surprised it's not something that people do more. I just never see it. Don't kill the Mana Dork. Don't kill it. We just want to put a, a Trox into play off of it. Fragment Reality, yup. 
Fragment Reality might be the best alchemy card in this format. You don't see many alchemy cards, honestly. I know that was like some people's fear when the format was announced. It's like, oh, it's another format with digital only cards. In all honesty, they're just not good enough. Like the digital only cards that exist are just not strong enough to compete against Brainstorms and Fields of the Deads and Lurus and Yarions and Natural Orders, Demonic Tutors, Dark Rituals, Necrobrones. Like, name a list of the most broken cards in Magic. The digital only cards, thankfully, are just not that strong. Yeah, for real. Fragment Reality, though, is one that might be the best, but it's really just a, like, removal spell? It's a removal spell that could exist in paper, even. Like, if you slightly change the wording. Let's uh, Seek the Beast. All right, Atroxan land. Opponent gets to Uro. We really need to stick a creature so we can natural order. I guess if the questing... Oh. Oh. That changes things a bit. On second thought, let's win the game. Uh, <laughs> what if I'll crack it for us? Blood Moon is about the perfect draw against our opponent's deck. We will uh, turn three triobes into mountains. So opponent has one green source and a lot of mountains. <laughs> oh, their mana base was looking so nice. Maybe this is why you don't see more money, Biles, is because uh, Blood Moon's a thing. Opponent grabs an uncastable Yarion while we'll play a land. Questing Druid. Well, these natural orders should be able to close out this game pretty quick. Opponent. All right, fetch land. Well, we will play a mountain. And, hmm. I guess we just natural order. Well, actually, I guess it's technically correct to attack for one first. <laughs> Given the circumstances, I'm not sure that one is actually relevant. But uh, we will natural order. Get rid of the questing, Druid. And I think we just take a Troxa. We can do it again next turn if we want to. So we get another natural order. That's part of the power of like a Troxa natural order. It's like the first Troxa usually finds us a sneak attack or a natural order. And if we find sneak attack, it usually finds us a big finisher. So like even if a Troxa isn't like immediately game over, it sets us up to do it all again the next turn. Opponent, Mountain. So many mountains. Opponents essentially mono red. <laughs> Five color mono red. Wow, there's the sneak attack too. Uh, well, let's just put our opponent out of their misery here. Uh, we will play a sneak attack. We will. Oh, this is actually not lethal, is it? <laughs> not quite. Put a Galta into play and smack you for 19. Opponent goes to one. I mean, it's not technically lethal, but I don't know how our opponent gets back in this. Opponent. Do you have a mono red win the game card? No. <laughs> eh, just Blood Moon things. <laughs> I'm so happy we have another Blood Moon. Yes. <laughs> Hard match that smiley face. So happy we got a Blood Moon format on Arena. Oh, it's the best. It is the best. This hand, pretty good sneak attack hand. So this is a, a turn three activate sneak attack and potentially if we're not disrupted, which we definitely could be. But opponent, all right, over and tomb, Mishra's Bobble, sure. Well, we will play a forest and death right shaman opponent. Mountain and <laughs> Tarmogoyf. I mean, Tarmogoyf's a classic. It is a classic. <laughs> I don't know how Gilda Goose, Hong Kong. I don't know how it matches up against... <laughs> against uh, sneak attacks. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe the Goyf is better than a World Spine Worm off of a sneak attack on turn three. I mean, so if our opponent doesn't kill a Mana Dork, we essentially just win next turn. We don't literally win. I guess I could also Thought Seize, but we get to World Spine Worm, hit you for 15, leave behind three five five Tramples. World Spine Worm is really good with sneak attack. It's not quite Emrakul. Like, Emrakul will always be the best sneak attack target just because... Mm, all right. Well, that's annoying. So much for our fun. Emrakul will always be the best because Annihilation just uh, pretty much immediately ends the game. Even if it's not lethal, your opponent just has no permanence. But uh, World Spine Worm is actually pretty good. I guess its weakness is if the opponent has swords in specific or like fragment reality. But opponent, go with number two. Well, let's thin the deck. Crack the fetch. We need to draw a natural order, or I guess another sneak attack would be good. But we need to draw something. We do get to seek the beast here. See, maybe, maybe this will find us something. All right, draw two, land and mana dork. 
Ooh, that's a sneak attack, though. Okay, so, uh, I guess our plan's back on. Crack this, grab a red source. Actually, I guess we can grab, can we grab a forest? Yeah, I guess that's fine. Which I guess means we should have just played the one from Exile, but whatever. Uh, we will crack the food. I mean, at this point, it just really... It feels like it really doesn't matter. It's still We should still try to play as tight as possible, but... We're about to slam a World's Mind Worm into play. Sneak attack. One mana. World's Mind Worm. Haste it up. Fifteen ya. Put you to one. And, yeah, I mean, this is... This is happening on turn three. Uh, yes, we will get three five five tramplers. Thank you, World's Mind Worm. Even goes back in the deck so we can draw it and do it again. All right, Tarmogoyf. <laughs> show, show us your, show us your Mari, Tarmogoyf. Show us your might. <laughs> you got, you got it. There goes our gilded goose, Hong Kong. But its job is done. It, it got down the sneak attack with the activation and. Opponent gonna go out on their own terms with the fetch land and uh oh GG Tarmogoyf GG <laughs> Tarmogoyf tries hard, I'll give it that. It does it does try hard, but boy, sneak attack world's mine is uh pretty strong. Alright. We are cheating massive things into play in timeless. Trying to, trying to at least. And this hand is about as bad as a hand can be. Ooh, this hand. This hand lets us maybe Blood Moon on turn two. I do like Blood Mooning people on turn two. So we're going to put Galta to the bottom. It's a little awkward because we do have Sneak Attack. Although Galta's our least powerful Sneak Attack threat anyway. We really like Galta in our deck as a one of to find with Natural Order for when we have other big things in hand. Get down the Gilded Goose. Honk, honk. Uh, about it. Fatal push the Gilded Goose. Sure. Well, delighted half. Like, so much for our turn two Blood Moon idea turn three blood moon though still could be pretty good opponent what it fails cracks it all right another dual land to soon be a mountain fatal push sure and death right well death right's actually kind of awkward well we'll see the death right is a problem so we get to blood moon and we are gonna blood moon but because our point is death right it is possible that they can still play magic opponent plays them out and there's what three fetches all right opponent going to make green Ooh, ooh, that's actually pretty bad all right that's a minskin boo minskin boo is ridiculously strong uh well we will take four natural order all right we need we need this death right shaman to live if Death Threat lives, we're kind of in business. We at least have a chance. The problem is our opponent can sack the hamster to kill the Death Threat. I don't know if they want to do that. I mean, they also get to draw four cards. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's so... So Inquisition can't take anything. The problem is now our opponent knows about natural order. So if they were thinking about maybe like just growing the hamster and smashing us, now they're definitely going to sack the hamster and kill the death ray. And then I think that's, ooh, and a Raghavan. And then I think that's pretty much just game. So opponent combat hits us. We gotta take, we gotta hope they just misplay basically. Opponent hits us. Raghavan does its thing, finds an Atroxa. Yeah, do you target our face, maybe? I don't even know if an Atroxa saves us here, honestly. Yeah, they killed the death ray. And now we're just, now we're just done. The hamster comes back, opponent's got lethal. So close. All right, it is sneak attack time. This hand could potentially get down a pretty fast sneak attack. Well, let's play land and delighted halfling. Go. Opponent. Cavern on Abriel Grazer. Sure, sure. Ooh, Field of Okay, so opponent's a Field of the Dead deck. I don't know if that's going to be fast enough, though, to stop our sneak attack. So we can seek the beast if we hit a, a land. We just get to sneak attack a World Time Worm next turn. Opponent. Tap land. And even more, even more grazing. Sure. Opponent puts another land into play, Bajukabog. 
boy. This would be a nice, uh, nice Blood Moon setup. Blood Moon, I think our opponent's just done. Uh, natural order, land, sneak attack. Well, play the land. I guess we natural order since we're gonna lose it. I guess we can just natural order. Maybe this is a Galtus scenario. Well, actually, we have the sneak attack for next turn, though. It's probably a Trax, actually. So we take... Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> if we didn't have sneak attack in hand, we would take Galt and put World's by Worm into play. But since we have sneak attack in hand, we can put World's by Worm into play with haste next turn anyway. So I think this is better. Grab a Blood Moon. Grab another World's Mind Worm. Grab a land. Should we take a Mana Dork? Yeah, I think World's Mine. Two World's Mines is fine. Uh, all right, opponent, your go. Opponent knows a Blood Moon's coming, too. They need something. Oh, no. <laughs> That's not going to do it. <laughs> Another tap to a land is not going to do it. Well, yeah, Trox and Blood Moon. <laughs> pretty, pretty smiley face, if you ask me. <laughs> Ooh, is this turn two Blood Moon? That looks like turn two Blood Moon. I mean... These hands, so, they're so tempting. We always keep them. Because if they work out, we sometimes just win. These hands, though, they do go wrong a lot of the time. Because it's reliant on a Mana Dork, which is very killable. And a lot of decks have Fatal Pushes, or Lightning Bolts, or Unholy Heats. Even Swords, some decks. I'm surprised I don't see more Swords in this format so far. I bet it'll change as the format, like, evolves. But I would say that Swords is on the list of cards that I think should see more play. It'll also be interesting to see if, based on experiences in Timeless, if anything changes in Historic. Like, if a Swords to Plowshares is, like, fringe in this format and doesn't see that much play, is there any chance Watsy is just like, yeah, you know what, let's just put it in Historic. Like, it's not breaking Timeless, so it's probably fighting in Historic as well. Mishra's Bobble. Not that Swords is bad, it's more that, like, there's just not that many white decks. I think white is, oh, no, no, turn one wrong, on. I would say white is the least appreciated color in this format. See, a ton of Grixes, is, is it anything in that realm? Like mono black, mono red, green. I think green and white are probably the two most, well, maybe that's not even true. Cause you see a lot of green just for the mana dorks. You see, you see a decent amount of mana dork decks. So I think white is, I would say, probably the worst timeless color at the moment. Or the least least played. So that's kind of a scary start. We have a goose. Can't really block the Ragavat. So we're just like taking the Ragavan hits and hoping for the best. Yeah. Honk honk. <laughs> Can't block. Found it. Steals a natural order. That's probably not gonna do much for them. We draw an Atroxa, which does go well with sneak attack. I will give it that. I think we just try to jam this blood, man. We can't sneak attack activate next turn anyway. There is definitely a chance they counter here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's fair. We knew that was a possibility. You gotta go for it, though. You, you can't pass up the chance of just auto-winning on turn two. Opponent hits us with the Ragavan. Well, what's the what's the cutoff in his dork? How many Ragavan brainstorm? How many Ragavan hits can you take without uh without losing? Two, three? Yeah, ton, not many. It feels like you lose after the first one, but that's not wow. Do they just brainstorm? Hmm. Brainstorm, no fetch, no anything. Do they brainstorm lock themselves? Well, we'll pass the turn. Wow, they did brainstorm again. Brainstorm into brainstorm so bad. You get one card deeper. Is our opponent just no lands on the top of their deck? Wow, brainstorm number three. Opponent is so desperate. Gotta get one card deeper. Maybe that card is the land. Yeah, opponents had to work very hard to <laughs> try to hit land number three here. Uh, okay, they found it, but it's not a fetch land. Well, okay, expressive iteration works kind of like a fetch land. That does get the non-lands off the top of their deck. So opponent's got a shot. We also have a shot of just sneak attacking next turn, maybe? Like we can make a food with a goose. No, oh, all right. Just kidding. In that case, I guess we just seek the beast and see what happens. Death right in land. I mean, it is fine to play sneak attack and not activate it. Not that many decks in this format seem to uh, seem to be able to kill an enchantment. Opponent finds her bolt, steals her bolt. Bolts are, we are down to 10. 
Yeah, another death rate's actually kind of fine. So I think rather than just running out the naked sneak attack, we'll just run out the questing druid, double death rate shaman. Hopefully this sets us up to sneak attack activate next turn. All right, opponent. What do you got? I mean, if we resolve the sneak attack, it should just be game. 10 is hopefully enough life. We finally, after what, three hits, managed to stop the Raghavan? <laughs> it looks like. All right, treasure cruise, draw three. Pretty easy to fill your graveyard in this format. A lot of treasure cruises happening pretty early in the game. I imagine our opponent's mana troubles are over with. Delver of Secrets, Dragon Rage Channeler. Actually kind of okay with our opponent tapping down here. Lightning Bolt. So the opponent has one treasure? Oh, I think we block. I think keeping our opponent one treasure is worth it. So they can't counter spell. We do have to be, okay, so we can only sneak attack. Huh, we can sneak attack once? At least we can play for a spell pierce. So there's a good chance we actually get to resolve the sneak attack. And then I guess we just, does it resolve? <laughs> yes, okay. So I guess we just sneak attack Atroxa? Yeah, I think Atroxa first. Atroxa, go up to 17, draw some cards. Like, well, that's a lot of lands. Natural Order, one of a million lands. And then, I guess, Atroxa sneak attack? Yeah, we know we just run it back next turn. Well, get and hit ya. Pony can block if they want to. All right, opponent just takes it. I mean, the big deal here is we get back up to 17, so we're not in danger of just dying. We were at the point where our opponent gets in potentially for six in the air and bolts a couple times. Are right, they going to kill the death rate? Yeah. I mean, our opponent needs to deal. Memory lapse does nothing. Like, opponent needs to deal with this sneak attack or kill us. And I don't know if it is it that can do either. Like, they hit us for six. Even if they have a handful of bolts, I don't think they can 11 us. And definitely not with only three cards in hand and one being a memory lapse. And I know how it is it that deals with sneak attack. Oh, they're looking at the... You can always tell when someone's about to delve. You can see the cards flickering in the graveyard. So you know, you know when the treasure cruise is coming. Found it. Gonna go on a cruise. Bad news for our opponent is uh, we have the least sneaky sneak attack. Our opponent knows it's coming. We just put all this stuff in our hand from the Troxas. So our opponent knows that they're about to die. Opponent cracks the bobble, takes a peek, and another Dragon Rage Channeler. And I mean, that should do it because we get to double. We get to double trouble this uh, this time. Well, Windswept Teeth, crack Windswept Teeth. Get another Red Source. And... Yeah, I mean, sneak attack, sneak attack, GG, sneak attack, put a Atrox into play, draw some more cards, we already got a World Spine Worm, we have two World Spine Worms now, Natural Order, Minskin Boo, Mountain, sneak attack, <laughs> World Spine Worm, and a bonus scoops it up, and this deck's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> if you like doing busted things and getting free wins, this deck's actually pretty sweet. <laughs> sweet, 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 sweet. So what did we learn this week about our free win deck for Tybliss? And overall, the deck worked pretty well. So in 16 games with the deck overall, 56% win percentage. Although I did a bit of rebuilding partway through in the version two of the deck with the changes, I actually jumped all the way up to 67% win percentage, which is actually really good. More importantly, the deck just gets a ton of free wins. We saw them throughout our video. There's a lot of decks that just can't beat the turn two Blood Moon. There's a lot of decks that can't beat the turn three Natural Order or Sneak Attack. Like our deck just does the biggest, most explosive, hardest to beat things possible in the format and just puts our opponent to the test. Like, do you have the counter spell? Can you kill all of our mana dorks to keep us from going off? Do you have a mana base that can beat a Blood Moon? If you pass the test, sure, fine, you got us. If you don't pass the test, you're probably gonna be dead on turn three at the 
latest. So if you like decks that win really quickly or when they lose, also lose pretty quickly and just do ridiculously huge things. If you like blood moon locking opponents or just putting 30 trampling power into play on turn three, this just might be the timeless deck for you. So anyway, that is our free win deck for timeless. That's been our much approved for this week. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon. Looking for even more magic? Well, check out the video where we taught arena zoomers about Ponza or maybe the one where we looked at the best spell from every year of Magic the Gathering.